Come with me to Luke the 18th chapter. Reading from the first verse to the eighth verse. Luke the 18th chapter. I want to give you some keys. You know, I love preaching. And I love to see people like excited, screaming, and jumping, and feeling good. I love that. It makes me happy too. But I'm sick and tired of seeing the devil messing with God's kids. And they don't know what to do. Because after the excitement, when the enemy comes at you, you don't need to call on me, on my name. You must have some keys. When he comes at you, you got to know what to do. I remember when I got saved and my father, my father was a Freemason. And he was a grand wizard for the Freemason. And my dad had a snake in the house we live in. And he communicates with the snake. And he was an ambassador. He traveled and went to London. And one of my bishops, and now he's been with me for 40 years. And uh, I said to him, I want us to fast for three days and let's kill this snake. And it was just between us. None of our wives, nobody knew about it. And on the second day, my dad called me from London and he said, son, I said, dad, he said, uh, that snake, make sure nobody kills it because it's not going to hurt anybody. I said, what did you say? He said, make sure nobody kills my snake because it's not going to hurt anybody. And I said, wow, that was a familiar spirit. He knew what we were thinking or what we were planning by a familiar spirit. You see, they also have a word of knowledge. They also have a word of wisdom. Like we have word of knowledge and word of wisdom, they also have it. We have to understand how the enemy works. It seems to me that the church is so ignorant of the workings and the adversary's devices. You can't overcome your opponent if you don't have understanding and knowledge about him. And I told my bishop, I said, you know what? It looks like the old man knows our move, so let's just leave it alone. And one time I was a young preacher, and he said to me, he said, son, come here. And I went, he was huge and very powerful. And he said, follow me. And he took me to one of his properties. And we had these coconut trees standing there. And there were fruits on all the coconut tree except one. And he spoke to the tree and said, I will come back next year. And if there is no fruit on you, I will cut you down. Do you hear me? And he walked off. And I said, Lord God Almighty, my father is gone off. Spirit of insanity has come on the old man. The following year, about the same time, the Holy Spirit reminded me and I went to check and there was fruit on the tree. I said, wow. That was when I started understanding how the other world works. And I started studying about how Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and they obeyed. And the Bible said, and the fig tree answered Jesus. Now, if the fig tree answered Jesus, then it stands to reason logically, ladies and gentlemen, that the fig tree said something. He had Jesus said something. The fig tree answered Jesus. So the fig tree could hear. It can hear because when Jesus commanded the fig tree to die, it died within 24 hours. It complied. That means they have ears to hear. The sea has ears. They hear. The wind can hear. The earth can hear. The Bible said, that says the Lord, render this man on this earth childless make his family childless and let them not prosper on the earth so the earth can hear Moses spoke to the earth and the earth opened up his mouth and swallowed up the sons of Korah 
Jesus spoke to the fig tree, to the sea, to the wind, and they comply. The church is still in baby stage Christianity. Some of you are looking at me strangely. Pastor Rodney, where did you bring this guy from? I'm part of you. I'm your brother. I'm just at the backside of the desert. The church is still ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Look the 18th chapter, 1 to 8. Look at something here. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men what? Men what? Men what? Ought to pray. Not when we come to church. Not breakfast, lunch, or dinner time. Always. Always is always. Why always? Because your adversary is as a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour. Because his assignment is to resist you and to resist the manifestation of your prophecy. He don't want to see the manifestation of what God has said about you. So he puts up a fight. And it's time for the church to fight back. Tell somebody, fight back. I preached a message last year and entitled the message, It's time to say something. You've been quiet for too long. And the enemy keeps speaking against you and you ain't saying nothing. It's time to open your mouth and say something. Yeah. Until God said, let there be light, there was nothing. Until you open your mouth and say something, nothing is going to happen. Tell somebody it's time to say something. Tell somebody say something. We have a responsibility. Things don't just happen, church. Don't let anybody fool you. You know, years ago, I had a friend of mine that had a mega church. And I was in his church on Sunday morning, and Dr. Lester Samuel, one of the generals of God, came in that church and preached. And when Dr. Samuel preached, he said there was coming a wave. He said, I see a wave coming. And it will sweep across this nation and this continent. And it shall begin in this house. After that service, we went to breakfast. And I said to him, I said, my friend, you have to declare a fast. And get the church to begin to pray like you've never prayed before. For the manifestation of that prophetic word. And he said, why do I have to do that? And I said, because God just revealed his original intent for your house, for this house. And for the nations through your house. And I said, Satan is going to come after you. You know what he told me? He said, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. And he takes care of his business. And I said, brother, it doesn't work that way. I told him. I said, it doesn't work that way. From that day, the devil striked. Strike his family. Kill. Attack, cancers, scattered the church, divided the leadership, destroyed everything. He's out of the ministry now. And the prophecy came to pass, but he wasn't part of it. Because he refused to understand the rules of engagement. That the devil doesn't know God's plan about your life until that says the Lord. When the prophecy is revealed, you remember when the wise men came to Herod. These wise men were not Christians. They were astrologers. They weren't believers. The wise men were not Christians. They weren't believers. They operated by familiar spirits. And they saw the star of the Son of God and understood what it stood for and what it meant. And when they told Pharaoh, they told Herod about the star and the prophets revealed the prophecy. And this was the prophecy. Thou, O Bethlehem of Judea, art thou not the least 
among all the Sudis of Judea, and yet out of thee shall come the ruler of my people. When he heard that word, ruler of my people, he was threatened, and a decree went forth to annihilate all children under the ages of two. Why? They wanted to kill the deliverer. They wanted the life of Jesus. And so many kids died. And the only way Jesus escaped was because he had a praying father who had a dream. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Take the little child and run and hide him in Egypt. Why? It was because of the prophecy. I have seen people receive great prophecies. And after the prophecy, all hell broke loose. And they'll ask me, what went wrong? I was doing fine. My business was doing okay. Till that prophet said, he sees money coming into my hands. And I said, because you don't understand the rules of engagement. You thought that after that prophetic word, things were just going to happen. No, it doesn't happen that way. When the prophetic word comes, you have to contend for the prophecy. You put up a fight. Because the enemy will come after you. You can look at me any way you want to look at me. You know something? I don't live in America. I live in Ghana. And after, after here, I'm gone. You, you need a visa to find me where I am. And I have a lot of angels around me. You can't reach me. So don't worry about it. See, I hear you. I have seen so many good people killed of God, destroyed. I've seen preachers. I have a lot of great friends of mine who have been killed, destroyed with scandals. The enemy come and steal, kill, and destroy because they took for granted the rules of engagement. They believed things that were not true. I had a preacher friend of mine that died recently. I was in his church in Atlanta just about two years ago with Pastor Paula and spoke to him about some situations and told him what he needs to do. And Pastor Paula asked me and said, what do you think? And I said, he's not going to do it. He won't do it. He won't do it. He's too secure financially. He's too secure. He has too much working for him. And I said, he can't humble himself and come down to the level that he must come to to get God back into his life. He won't do it. He's too secure. The system in America here makes men heroes and stars instead of men. And it doesn't make God God. It makes everybody great. People don't ask the church to pray for them anymore. I preach. I've seen miracles and I ask my church, pray for me. I always, I'll go on my knees and I say, everybody pray for me. And I don't see that in America. In America, send your prayers. We will pray for you. Send your prayers. We will pray for you. As long as you come forth as a hero and a star, the devil will take you down. Because nobody stands alone. God never intended that the body should stand alone. We are, intercontin we are interconnected. We need one another. And it doesn't matter how gifted you are. You need the brethren and the brethren needs you. And it's when we stay together that we are strong. Somebody say yes. yes. We underestimate who we are dealing with. I tell people, I say, when I hear people daring Satan, I feel very sad for them because you don't know who you're dealing with. I'm not magnifying the devil, but I think we are ignorant of who we are dealing with. I hear Christians saying, Satan, I bind you. You can't bind Satan. You can't bind him. You can resist him. Step fastly in the faith. You can rebuke him. You can speak the word to Satan. But you can't bind him. It's not yet time for him to be bound. He'll be bound after we return after the rapture for a thousand years. In the bottomless pit. By one angel, not two angels, not a thousand angels. One angel would take hold of Satan and bind him with a chain. Just one angel. But it's not yet time. 
And we need to understand who we're dealing with. When Satan fell, he was fired in heaven by Michael, the archangel. Michael took him down. One angel took him down. Just one. Michael took him down. The minister of defense. Took Satan down. Sometimes when I'm in deep warfare and intercession, I will hear the spirit say, deploy and call for Michael and appeal to the father for his release. One angel took him down. He lost his place in heaven, but he did not lose his power and he did not lose his anointing because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He lost his office, but he did not lose his power. And when Jesus came, he said, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. So the enemy has power, but we have authority. He has power, but he doesn't have authority. Because authority is designated. You can't have authority if you haven't been under authority. The centurion said, I am a man under authority. And I said to one, go, and it is done. And another, come, and it is done. Why? Because I am under authority. So authority is designated. You can't have authority if you are a rebel. And Satan has power, but he doesn't have authority because he's a rebel. And what we have is authority. And by authority, we can restrict. We can restrain. We can interrupt. We can hold back. We can suspend activities of the powers of the, of the, powers of the dark kingdom. If we don't understand what we are dealing with, we can take this well. The kingdoms of this world are to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And we need to understand how our kingdom works and how their kingdom works. Is anybody hearing me? Somebody say, talk to me, talk to me.